If we take pictures of animals on an overcast or rainy day or after the sun has already set, there is usually not a lot of light around that can enter our camera. And especially if there's also some kind of movement of the animal, there is not much we can do except for like raising the ISO to still get a properly exposed image. However, if the camera sensor only gets a low amount of light, the image quality will degrade. You will mostly see this that you, your images will lack detail, there is more noise, especially in background and dark areas, and sometimes also the colors and the dynamic range start to suffer. New cameras are generally dealing better with this, and if you're using faster glass, you're also a bit better off usually, but especially if you use a zoom lens like a RF 100 to 500, or maybe you use one of these lightweight super tailors like the Canon RF 800 f11, you will end up with high ISOs quite a lot. And here new software that has been developed over the last few years can really help. So far I have been mostly using Topaz Denoise. I tried Photo AI like half a year ago and was not completely happy, but it has been continuously improved, so I wanted to give it another shot. And yesterday DxO Puro 3 was released, so I thought it was a good opportunity to test both um, applications on several pictures. And I already edited four pictures and brought them here for comparison. But I want to also show on an additional picture how exactly this program work, how the workflow is, because for me in the end, even if one application offers slightly be better performance, if the workflow is not suiting my needs, then I will not use it. So I hope you will get a good picture of this in this video. So I'm here in Capture One, but it works very similar in Lightroom and actually a bit later in the video I show you how the workflow kind of works if you start from Lightroom. But for now let's start with Capture One. I have this picture of this tit in flight and if we zoom in you can see the noise in the background is not even too bad despite being at 12800 ISO. That's simply because the background is quite bright. But on the tit we can see that it's really a bit uh, disturbing and kind of masking the details that might still be underneath it. So we give this a shot, um, I right click and then go open with DxO Pure Raw 3. Why not edit with? I don't know, but I had some problems that if I do edit with DxO Pure Raw 3 and then um, send it as a DNG file, it somehow was not recognized by DxO Pure Raw 3 and gave me an error message. So this works quite well. It has one slight disadvantage, but I will come to this in a minute. So as you can see, I'm still on my demo because the software was just released yesterday. Um, and your image will appear here. So what I will do is click process now. I use the Deep Prime XD algorithm, which just for me worked best in some tests. Um, and I usually leave the optical corrections off because I think they are way too much. Um, I, in the end, want to have a DNG, which is kind of a raw format. And it should save the file, basically make a subfolder in the current folder. And with export 2 here, I select Capture 122. Um, just because if you go on this open width in Capture 1 that I showed you, it will afterwards not be imported in the catalog of Capture 1. So with this, it's kind of opening the import prompt in Capture 1. I will, you will see all this in a second. Um, I need to use unique name here because I already did this before for my German video. And now it's basically... Uh, editing the picture or applying the noise reduction. Depending on your machine, this may take several seconds up to two or three minutes and also depending on the file size. So this was a file size of the R5, um, 45 megapixels. This obviously takes a bit longer. For my computer, it's around one minute. So the editing is finished. Um, and as you can see in the background, the import prompt already appeared from Capture One. So I will just import it and add it to the catalog because it's already um, yeah, it's already in the right location on my hard drive. We can first quick have a look how it looks like and you will see you have this greenish filter that looks really terrible. Um, you can avoid this by just in the noise reduction section um, putting the color reduction down and I think it doesn't look too bad. I will now edit the same picture uh, this time with edit with and then process with uh, Topaz Photo AI. This is a plugin that you might need to activate when you start. Um, I will edit and now it's opening Photo AI, which again might take one second or two. 
So basically Photo AI has now opened the picture and as you can see on the lower left, it's like scanning the image and trying to detect the subject, which worked quite well. And this is mostly used for the sharpening. As far as I understood it or observed, the noise reduction is applied over the whole image. And I will actually zoom into 200% so that you see a bit more what's happening here. So I think one of the main big, big differences between DxO Pure Raw and uh, Photo AI is that DxO Pure Raw you select the algorithm and then you just send it through. You cannot have you don't have much of a control what happens after. Whereas in Photopus Photo AI, similar as in Denoise, you kind of get a live preview and then you can edit or, or change the parameters to your liking. And here I really don't like them. Um, first of all, usually the I didn't make good experiences with the strong noise reduction. I put this to normal. And I also have to think the sharpening is too much. So I put this down and you can see it's like updating the preview. And it already looks much better in my opinion. Um, I will maybe increase the noise reduction here a bit. Just important here is stay at normal and not that strong. I really made much better experiences. So I think that's not too bad. So I'm going ahead and save to capture one. And you will see here the process bar and once it's done, you can also continue in Capture One. We're back to Capture One and if we now zoom in and compare both images, again, also for the photo AI, we need to put down this color noise slider. We see that they're quite similar. I think DxO Pure Raw might have a little bit less noise in the background, but they're really comparable. As I said, you have a bit less options in DxO Pure Raw, but what you could do if you want more details, um, is actually activate the lens corrections. I will quickly show you how this works. So we open again the raw file with pure raw. So now we can select the lens softness here. I will put it to soft because we don't need too much of a correction and start the processing. So we're now back to capture one with this same tit in flight edited, this time with this lens correction on the soft sharpness level. And I think this is a really good, good result. It's, we see noticeably more details not really more noise and it doesn't look over sharpened yet even though i think the standard value one more would have been too much so here i'm really pleased with what we got out with dxo puro as promised let me show how the workflow with lightroom would work so basically you would also select your picture and then not go to edit with but go to the plugin extras and then here says process with dxo puro or process with uh, topos photo ai and afterwards if you click on one of them the rest of the workflow is quite similar um, since it's a plugin the interface might look slightly different so you see that the puro is opening now but all the settings that you have are exactly the same and you can also just continue of course here i don't want to export it to capture one just leave this blank uh, you can start with the editing and once it's done, it will bring you automatically back to Lightroom and the image will be imported there already in your catalog. So if we now have a look at the other pictures that I edited with uh, both Topaz Photo AI and the DxO Pure Raw, you can see here this tit, which um, there is actually two issues with the picture. First of all, it's quite noisy, also due to the dark background and the sharpness is not perfect. It's good enough, but not perfect, maybe because I was using 1200 millimeter. Um, and I think it's also interesting to say that this was taken with a Z9, so you can see also these algorithms of the programs that don't only work for Canon cameras, obviously also for Nikon and Sony. And this was actually a compressed file, a compressed uh, RAW from the Z9. And if we look at the result from Deep Prime, it actually looks quite good. I think compared to Photo AI, there is a bit more noise in the background, but for me not disturbing. And we see somehow more details in the DxO Pure Raw. It's not a huge difference, but I still prefer the DxO Pure Raw version. Then here we have a Nutcracker. I need to say that there was not even so many problems to begin with. The image was sharp, it was not very noisy, still I wanted to try if we can get it a bit cleaner. And it worked quite well with Deep Prime. However, with the Deep Prime algorithm of Pure Raw, the only thing, even with the lens corrections disabled, for me the sharpening is a bit too hard. I would have preferred a bit less. It's, on, it's still okay, but it's on the higher level. However, if you look at photo um, AI, I feel like that the sharpness overall is okay, but just above the eye where there is less micro contrast, more in the black areas, 
there it seems a bit too soft. And I then tried to edit this as a TIFF in Photo AI instead of a RAW. And surprisingly, the sharpness is better in this area. Um, but behind the eye, it's a bit softer. So it was just not as consistent, I would say, as photo as uh, DxO Puro. Photo AI gave a bit more, well, the results depended a bit. And sometimes the TIFF works better, sometimes the RAW, but overall, I would say still 90% of the times I would recommend using the RAW workflow. Let's move to another picture of this goshawk. Um, it was before sunrise, so it was very dark. And even though I used quite a long shutter speed, there is still a lot of noise because it was at a high ISO. And you can see that DxO Puro is doing a quite good job at reducing the noise and still maintaining the details and maintaining them in a quite natural way. Um, here, Photo AI seems to be a bit over sharpening. It looks like less natural if you look at the fine feather details. On the other hand, in the areas with less contrast, it it like kind of kills more details with the noise reduction. So again, I prefer the result of DxO Puro. And if you cannot see the differences so well here, in the video descriptions, I put a link to a Dropbox folder where you should have access to the screenshots in high quality. Finally, let's have a look at the last picture for today. And this is this elephant that I uh, shot with my wide angle lens in Botswana. And it was already after sunset, giving us really nice colors on the horizon, but the eyes were quite high because I could not use a long shutter speed because there was still some movement with the trunk where it was feeding. And you see there's a lot of noise in the image. So I tested the photo AI and on the first glance it looks quite good. However, there are some artifacts in the background that I really don't like and I observed this with in the past as well, also with denoise. It's not doing a perfect job. It's really keeping the details in the grass and in the small hairs below the mouth quite well, but artifacts in the background and also in the elephant itself. And if we switch to um, the DxO Puro image, this is quite a difference. Um, here we still have some noise in the background, but it's kind of more evenly spread or, well, may maybe more randomly spread, I should say. There is like, it's not annoying me so much, this noise. It looks quite good. We still have the feather detail, uh, the hair details around the mouth, and even in the tusks, we can actually still see some fine details. There is no weird white dots uh, in the silhouette of the elephant. So here, DxO Puro does a way better job, in my opinion. So I don't think I need to talk too much about my conclusions here, because you could see all my editing steps and how the results look like in the end. And for me, DxO Puro really, the version three seems to be ahead of uh, Photo AI and topus denoise at least at the moment this could of course change in a few months or whatever but i will buy the dxo puro um, version 3 i just really like the results and it's a bit easier since there is not the interactive interface you might have a bit less options to control but overall it's click quicker i can just even a uh, put a batch of images through it, um, do something else in the meantime. Even if my computer is super busy, I can go for a walk. When I come back, they're all done. So I will definitely buy it. If you're curious to, to test it, you can get a three, 30 days um, free trial period. Um, I put some links for both Topaz uh, Photo AI and DxO Puro down in the video descriptions. These are affiliate links, meaning if you eventually decide to buy one of the products, I get a small provision, but of course there are no extra costs for you. And I encourage you to try them before you buy, since there is this option. If you have already tried one of them before, I would be really curious to read in the comment what you think about the software. And also if you would be curious in a more in-depth tutorial of how to use them. Until then, have a nice day. Bye.